Hey, if you want to see how I made this modern console table with a floating top, just watch this video. Let's go. This project started while I was at work. One of my coworkers asked me if I could build a console table. So I said, absolutely. Then she showed me a picture of what she wanted and I said, no, I can't make that. That looks too complicated. Um, and then after a little bit of convincing, she convinced me to give it a shot. So here we go. Um, I spent some time in SketchUp and figured out all the angles that I would need and then had a cut list. So I took all my boards, marked them out, and then cut them down to rough length. So once you get it all cut, you will have three boards that are 48 inches long, six boards that are 30 inches long, and then six boards that are 24 inches long. Hold on to those scraps though. You're gonna need those in just a few minutes. Then you wanna take all those boards that you just cut and bring them over to the table saw. You wanna start by taking them and running it through and cutting off one of the factory edges to get a nice, clean, crisp edge on one side. And then you're gonna take all those boards and run them back through again with that clean crisp edge up against the fence and cut a bunch of two inch strips. By doing this it makes you have clean crisp edges on all the boards and none of that factory edge round over save your fingers no splinters edge kind of thing. You want those nice clean crisp sharp edges. And then once you get all that you're going to take them over to your clamps and start clamping them all together. Um, each panel is going to be five two inch boards and you just glue them to make a 10 inch panel. You're gonna have one that's 48 inches, two that are 30 inches, and two that are 24 inches. And to save a little time, you can actually glue some of the panels together. This is Margie checking on me to be sure I don't accidentally glue up a 20 inch panel instead of two 10 inch panels. Thanks for checking. And let's see, did I make one 20 inch panel? And no, got two 10 inch panels, good job. All right, now that we got all the panels glued up and ready, we're gonna run them all through the planer. Get all that glue squeezed out and make them nice and clean. Look at that, looks like I know what I'm doing. All right, now it's over to the table saw. So I use SketchUp to find all my angles and then I just bring them over to the table saw, use this digital angle finder and the first angle is going to be 46.8 degrees and that's going to be on a 30 inch and a 24 inch piece so set the angle use my miter gauge and take your time cut this as clean and square as possible and then the next angle you're going to use is 86.4 degrees so set the saw to that and then you cut the 24 inch panels the opposite end of the other angle that you just cut and that's it for angles then I take out the gust tool no nah, I'm just kidding take out the Harbor Freight biscuit joiner and put a few biscuits in there and then I made these little clamping calls clamp those on just so I can get even clamping pressure on those weird angles that I just cut spread a little glue in there put my biscuits to help with alignment and clamp it all together and then putting those clamping calls on there makes this glue up a lot less stressful and it keeps the pressure even across the glue joint then I just wipe away the excess and here you see me cutting the bottom of the leg I actually forgot to do this before I glued it together so you can do this before you glue it all up and make it a lot easier on yourself but I like to do things the hard way and speaking of doing things the hard way let's go add those biscuit joints that I forgot to do earlier yep love doing it the hard way but anyway these biscuit joints are going to be the joints that connect at the peak of the base of the table 
So I added some more clamping calls. These are just pieces of plywood that I clamped down just to give me something to put pressure on. And this is stressful glue up number one. Um, I added some glue, then put in my biscuits, and then I struggled with these two bases trying to put them together. And lucky for me, I have some help in the shop, but Margie didn't feel like helping today. She actually got kind of bored with my glue up. So she said, I'll take a nap, you do the hard work. Anyway, back to work. So got it all together, glued up, clamped up. This took me a lot longer than I want to admit, um, and I used 95% of my clamps to get it all glued up. But it all came together nice and tight, and that glue joint was perfect. And here's a video of all the clamps. And while we wait for the glue to dry, I'm going to have a little fun with Marge. Then the next day I came out and took all the clamps off and this was the first time I got to see kind of what it was going to look like and I know it's just the base but I was starting to get excited. This thing was coming together really smooth and I hadn't had any major issues yet. This is kind of a foreshadowing though. Anyway, then I sanded the whole thing and it was time to move on to the wedges. These are going to be the support for the top piece. And I start by marking it out with my pencil, getting it all evenly spaced out. Then I just add a little bit of wood glue and brad nail it in place while the glue dries. And while we wait for that glue to dry, let's move on to the top. I start by sanding it all smooth, and then I add some biscuit joints that will be used later to attach the top to the base. So two in the back part of the top piece, and then I move over and add two biscuit joints into the wedges that will be used to glue it all together later. And now that I have it all ready, it's time for the first dry run. Let's see how all this fits together. Hopefully everything goes smooth. It's looking pretty good so far, and let's see. That's not good. Oh, man. mistake I made. You want to let them know what I did wrong? Yeah. So in the last clip, you could see that there was still some wiggle in it, in this top, like a seesaw. Uh, originally, I thought that the top was warped, so I made a whole new top and put that on there, and it did the same thing. And then I thought maybe my base was warped, but I wasn't going to make a whole new base. So I was like, what is going on with this thing? And then I realized that if I took my biscuits and put them as spacers and raise that back panel up a little bit, it fixed it. So all I gotta do is add a little bit of a spacer to the wedges in the back and should fix the problem. So easy fix, just caused me a lot of headache because I was chasing my tail for a couple days. But easy fix, so let's get that done today. All right, let's go. To fix this, I just used some small spacer pieces that I cut on the table saw and then glued and brad nailed them right onto the wedges that were already there. And this picked that back panel up just enough to not come in contact with the peak of the top of it of the base. Then I added the biscuit joints and this is dry run number two. Let's see how this goes. Looking good. Nice and sturdy. Love it. Now let's move on to finish. I start by using a pre-stained wood conditioner and because this is pine and it's a softwood, softwoods tend to absorb the stain unevenly and can leave a splotchy finish. So you can avoid this by putting on the wood conditioner first. So I start by applying a liberal coat of this pre-stain all over everything. Let it sit for about 20 minutes and then you can move right on to your stain. 
for stain I'm gonna use a Men Wax Early American and this is kind of a medium brown it's not too dark um, for the base coat you don't want it to be too dark because we're gonna come back and add a, another layer on top so you want just a light medium brown and the wood conditioner that I put on before actually helps lighten this uh, stain up a little bit the next thing we're going to add is a Minwax color wash. This is weathered gray, and this is actually a new product for me. I've never used this before, but I actually really like the way that this came out. It adds a kind of an extra layer, makes the piece a little bit more, gives it more layers, more dynamic. Dynamics. Dy makes it look cooler. I don't really know how to describe it. But you put it on and you put it on really, really light and then wipe away the excess and it gives it this really cool like weathered look, but it's not like obnoxious weathered look. You'll see. For the top layer, I went with the Minwax Polycrylic. This is the clear matte and it is a water-based stain. Stain? Water-based polyurethane. Um, I used this one because it kind of has like a blue undertone to it and the client really wanted more of a cool tones not super warm because her house is grays and blues so she wanted a kind of a blue undertone so this polyacrylic adds almost like a coolness to your piece and not like cool like sunglasses cool like blue if that makes sense but anyway you want to put on a good liberal coat and then take long strokes at the end just to even it all out. And I applied two coats of this just to add for a little extra protection. The next day I came out and it was time for final assembly. You'll notice I actually didn't put stain or finish where the glue was going to be for the top and the base wedges. And that's just to be sure that the glue holds really good. I didn't know or I don't know if glue sticks to stained wood. Um, if you know, drop a comment below, let me know. Um, maybe next time I can just stain it all and it won't matter. But I didn't want to risk it because I didn't know whether it affected or not. Anyway, I just put the biscuits in with a little bit of glue. I applied just enough glue to get a good strong hold, but I didn't want any squeeze out because it would be near impossible to get inside that little crack to clean up any glue glue squeeze out so got it all lathered up in glue I plop the top down and then get it all lined up and the glue actually made these biscuits swell a little bit so I had to force it down but then once they got in place it looked great I added this piece of plywood to the top that way my clamps didn't mar up the top because this thing's finished I didn't want to do anything else to it um, yeah add the clamps just enough to get uh, just a tiny little bit of squeeze out and it actually worked really great I then came back and added one clamp to the front because I didn't want that front panel to pop up with all the pressure on the back and just to be sure that it didn't go anywhere I added one screw kind of toward the front because I couldn't put any glue up there I didn't want that wood to twist and warp later on and kick that front panel up. So pre-drilled the hole, added the screw in there, and this is just to keep that front edge touching at the peak and the base of the top piece. Hopefully that made sense. Then I take the clamps off, take the plywood off, and boom. This is the first time seeing it finished, and I was in love with this piece. Not like love love but I really liked it and like anything you love I just kind of petted it for a few minutes just admiring it um, but there was one thing I wanted to do I want to test the strength so I pushed down on both sides pretty hard and it didn't move so I knew it was gonna be good but I did want to kind of smooth that top up just a little bit so I took some 320 grit sandpaper sanded it wiped it smooth and put one last coat of poly acrylic on the top and this just made that finish like smooth as glass it was just perfect and 
that's it. This thing's finished. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. That was good.